Hi, welcome to BeFit BeFab webinar series. Today we're going to cover the dangers of sugar and 10 ways to quit sugar. So welcome, my name is Steph, Stephanie, I'm also known as Coach Steph B. I'm a certified professional health, fitness, wellness and nutrition coach. I'm also a marathon runner. I'm half French, half British. I am based in New York City. I have one husband and two dogs, so I apologize in advance in case we hear um, my furballs in the background. Um, I don't have full control of them. And as you know, one of the keys to wellness is to let go of what we can't control. Um, much like everyone else, I have been through the roller coaster of life involving the social pressure that we get on the female body image to look a certain way, be a certain size, be a certain shape. Um, and to be honest, I finally found my truth and my fit fab self, quite frankly, when I really quit sugar, everything just started to change. So I wanted to share a little bit of my key learnings with you today. Um, I'm also the founder of Be Fit Be Fab. And my company is all about helping you connect and reconnect with your fit and fab core self. So I launched a platform, BeFitBeFab.com, and I offer in-person coaching as well as online coaching, covering all aspects of mindset, nutrition, and movement. So whether it's about a fitness training plan, training for a marathon, wanting to learn how to eat healthy, changing your mindset, or just getting a full makeover of your lifestyle, those are all the sort of areas we can work on together. And we can do that either by meeting or over the phone, over FaceTime and Skype, um, and I also have a mobile application and an online private hub in which you have access and all your content. Um, most recently, I also created a group called FitFab40. This group is exclusively for women and it's uh, geared towards women getting close to 40, 40 and above. My day-to-day -day is really focused on you and helping you become healthier, become fitter and therefore being happier overall um, in your life and every day. So, are you excited? Let's dive in. So, have you ever felt like you still had that five or ten pounds to lose and that no matter what, it still keeps sticking to you, no matter what you do, but it keeps coming back? Have you ever had that feeling just after lunch where you just want to crawl back into bed, you're tired, your brain is foggy, you've got a headache, you just can't take it anymore, and you think, well, what I just need now is maybe another coffee and another chocolate bar or a piece of cake or a cookie. Let's face it, we've all been through that. And how have you ever looked? Have you ever looked at how much sugar you actually consume? So here's the things that you can expect in today's webinar and the things we're going to cover. We're going to have a look at what sugar does to your digestion and your gut, how sugar affects your brain, and then we're going to look at about 10 tips to quit sugar. At the end of this talk and this presentation, I'll also give you a quick overview of some of my programs that can support your efforts and help you take action. And there's also a couple of special offers and freebies, and stay tuned because I do have five handouts that are connected with this presentation. So let's take a first look at what sugar does to your digestion, digestion and why it's bad. So have you ever thought about how sometimes, and I hear this all the time with so many of my clients, I feel bloated, uh, everything is fine except I can't seem to lose my belly. Um, I have indigestion all the time. Oh, no, I'm not going to eat those foods because I know that um, this is going to be better for me. Oh, I must have bread with my meal, etc., etc. So what sugar does to your digestion? A healthy, vital digestion is crucial for looking and feeling your best. It's an essential part of the detoxification process, as well as ensuring your body gets all the nutrients it needs. When your digestion is inhibited or it's not working as it should, your whole body suffers the effects. And think about it. You know, you take something that you eat, okay? You eat 
you know, a plate of food, it goes straight through what? It goes into your mouth, down your digestive tubes, into your stomach, okay? And then through into your gut. What does the body do when it, once it receives the food? It is going to break it down. It's going to take the nutrients it needs, and then it's going to try and flush out whatever toxins are left from that food, whatever the things it doesn't need, okay? And it's going to try and send it into the gut and try and get and let the gut take care of that and get rid of it, okay? So if you're eating something that is going to affect, that is not effectively going to fuel your body and is going to have an effect on your digestive system, what happens? It just goes straight into your gut but it doesn't get eliminated by the body. So what happens? It just sits there and it piles up and you start to bloat. Sugar's effect on the digestive system has less to do with the system's mechanical functions and more to do with the inha inhabitants that keep things working as they, sh they should. So that's your gut microbiome. So you've heard of this, you know, you've got the healthy gut bacteria um, and then you've got the unhealthy gut bacteria. So the little bacteria that lives in your gut are linked to more than just your digestive health. They're linked to everything corresponding to your immune system and to your hormonal balance. When the bad bacteria in your gut outnumbers the good, your inner ecosystem will lose its balance and it will result in some poor digestion. Candida overgrowth, parasites, and even more serious digestive issues like a leaky gut syndrome, irritable bowel syndrome, etc. So, even minor symptoms like gas, bloating, skin problems all link back to the imbalance in the gut microbiome. Sugar is the main culprit that throws off this delicate internal balance. Sugar feeds that bad bacteria and makes them thrive, whilst the good bacteria love healthy food and a high in nourishing fats and, and fiber. When you get rid of sugar, you literally starve the bad bacteria that causes every system in your body to, sh to suffer. Just another reason to ditch the sugar and start feeling totally vital and energized. So if you think about it, you have the good bacteria and the bad bacteria, okay? The good guys, they want kale, they want broccoli, they want carrots, they want fresh fruit fruit and blueberries and apples and you have the bad bacteria the bad guys they don't care about the apples and the broccoli all they care about is the chocolate bar the sugar the cookie the muffin the pancakes and the more you feed them the more they become hungry and the more they become hungry the more they're going to entertain in your brain that craving for sugar okay but if you stop feeding them, they will go away, leaving space for the good bacteria to take on the healthy foods and provide you with a ha happy and healthy gut. And I'm super sure you've everyone's heard about the gut being the second brain of the body. And there's a whole, bu a whole book um, that's actually been written and dedicated onto how your whole emotional status, emotional health, and actually your intellectual brain is all linked to your gut and how a happy and healthy gut equals a happy and healthy brain and therefore a happy and healthy human in general. Um, if you want to know more about that, then drop me an email um, or we can chat about it later on. Let's move on. Let's have a look now at what sugar does to your brain, okay, and why it's bad. So, have you ever been in one of those midday slumps where you can't seem to think straight? You know, it's just after lunch, it might be 2 or 3 p.m., and you're sitting there at your desk, and your brain is really foggy, you start having a headache, you're tired, you're sleepy, you want to grab a coffee, you want to grab the cookie jar, and you're stuck in a daze, and you don't even think about it, but you, you just reach out for the sugar-laden latte or the muffin or even both, okay? Well, what if I told you that there is a way your brain experiences those stimul stimulants 
in the exact same areas as cocaine. Is that crazy? In fact, there is an image which shows you it's a, a brain that's been um, scanned. So it's the MRI of a brain. And on one hand, you have a brain after taking cocaine and on the other, a brain after eating sugar and drinking a very sugary soda. And both brains are identical. You wouldn't see the difference. Now, that is crazy. That is absolutely insane. And this is the scary part. And this is why it is so important to be aware of the dangers of sugar. New research is coming out every single day on just how bad sugar is for your brain. It's as bad for your brain as being in an extremely stressful or abusive situation 24-7. It's as bad for your brain as if you were just consuming chemicals and drugs all the time. A sugar addiction can actually impair the f function of the hippocampus the part of the brain that is responsible for memory and coping with stress. Meaning, the more you eat stress, the more you eat sugar, and the more stress you get, and the more stress you get, the more you're going to eat sugar. And it's just this vicious cycle that you're going to be stuck into. So we need to break that cycle today. We need to take action today. Not tomorrow, not next week, not next month. Start today. What can you do today to reduce sugar? Okay. And hopefully with the tips that follow later in this, you will be able to take action immediately. The truth is that when you go off sugar, your brain is going to start to repair itself naturally. The brain fog you deal with every day is going to disappear. You're going to feel a clearer mind, focused like you've never been before. When sugar is your primary fuel source, you're not only damaging your brain and your physiological level, but you're also impairing your higher mental functioning. And using sugar or refined carbohydrates as a pick-me-up creates this vicious cycle that was just mentioned. If the effects of the sugar wear off quickly, and then that low energy returns with a vengeance. And, oh, I'm feeling twice as tired. And you think, I'm feeling twice as tired because... I had something sweet, I suddenly had this boost of energy, you know, you know how we always say about kids after a certain time, you don't want to give them sugar because they go a little bit crazy and hyper, it's exactly the same for us, you know, regardless of our age, sugar has that same effect on our body and our system, okay, so once you cut the sugar out of your diet, you can transform this cycle and you can create a, a stable sustainable energy that allows you to actually focus and feel mentally clear. And that's just one of the many benefits of eliminating sugar from your life. Now, how about this? Ladies, if you're hearing me, listen to this carefully. Our body and our metabolism doesn't actually transform sugar into energy. Do you know what it does? It converts it into fat and we store it. And it inhibits our ability to use fat as a source of energy. So what does that mean? You eat sugar. Your body converts it into fat. It goes straight into the hips. It goes straight to your gut. It goes straight to those nasty places. You don't want it to be sticking out. And you can't lose weight. It prevents you from losing that extra gain pound or two. Okay. So if you actually think about it, sugar could be responsible for that extra five or 10 pounds you're not losing. And the crazy thing is, and we'll see that in a minute, is that sugar is hiding everywhere. Okay. But first, let's have a look at what sugar does to your hormones and why that is bad. So how sugar affects your hormones. If you feel absolutely terrible before your period, sorry, any guys listening, but we do have to talk about this. It is part of life. If your mood is all over the place and your sleep is disturbed, you know, you can bet that the amount of sugar in your diet is having an effect on your hormones, which is causing those symptoms to manifest and to be amplified. Of course, every woman is going to respond differently to her cycle. Every woman is going to have her highs and lows and that's just part of how we are and who we are and how we were built 
but we can have a little bit of control over our hormones and how we can control what happens inside our body is based on what we put inside the body okay so if you want to control how your body your organs and your hormones are responding to -to day-to-day life that's controlled by what you're going to put inside the body so what are you going to eat and drink and think as well so let's take a look at insulin and hormones the most powerful hormone in the body is well you guessed it insulin insulin and sugar are obviously intimately linked sugar causes insulin to spike and this can lead to lower levels of an important protein known as the sex hormone binding globulin SHBH. And according to Dr. Sarika Arora, SHBG binds excess estrogen and testosterone in the blood. But when it's low, these hormone levels increase. Insulin also increases the production of testosterone, which is then converted into even more estrogen by fat tissue in the belly. So this is exactly what I was referring to a few moments ago, is that in simple terms, we eat sugar, gets converted into fat, stored. And these effects means that the ratio of estrogen to progesterone, known for keeping us calm and happy, is way too high, leading to irritability, anxiety, insomnia, mood swings, and so much more. So looking at our adrenal health, adrenal fatigue is the most common hormonal imbalance in women, probably because we do so much and we're often under chronic stress, okay? How do we hear all the time that women are multitaskers? Don't ask a man to do two things at the same time. However, women, we have to be moms, we have to be entrepreneurs, we have to be the worker, we have to be the housekeeper, we have so many hats to wear and so many things to juggle at the same time that we're constantly having to call that fight or flight mode. So we're under this chronic stress. So the way our body can deal with stress is thanks to the energy it has in reserve. Our adrenal health is pivotal for ensuring that our hormones are working as they should. Sugar robs the adrenal glands of the nourishment they need and creates an even more stress in the body. So, okay, you got it. You're stressed from the outside world. It's eating up your adrenal energy. You eat sugar. It's eating up even more your adrenal energy and makes you even more stressed. When you did sugar, you'll soon realize that not only does your body feel better, but your mood will improve And all those dreadful PMS symptoms will subside. Gradually, they will reduce and it will get better. I promise you. All right. So are you ready ready now to take a look at 10 ways to quit sugar and feel amazing? I can hear you all getting very excited. Um, So let's dive straight into it and dive in head first. First of all, what you want to be doing is reading the labels on everything. Like I said earlier, I don't want you to plan to do this tomorrow. I don't want you to wait until next week. Just start doing it right now, right here, right now. Let's take a look. What's around you? Is it your desk, a table, a kitchen top? Are you in a grocery store? Are you sitting in your car? Are you driving past a takeout? Wherever you are, take a look right now at your surroundings. There's always tons of excuses to wait, I know. Oh, but I have a party tomorrow, so I may as well wait until the day after. I have something else coming up on Saturday. Let's start on Monday. You know, I hear them all. And the truth is, the time is now. The time is never next week. The time is never next month. The time is now. I want you to apply the same principle and same approach to your health as the one you have when you sometimes treat yourself to a nice pair of shoes or a new dress or a new handbag or a holiday. You always say to yourself, but the time is now. This is when I need it. This is when I need to wear these shoes. This is when I need to take that trip. It's exactly the same when it comes to your health and even more. The time is now. Don't wait 
until the holiday, don't wait until Valentine's Day, don't wait until Halloween has passed and then think, oh, well, I'm going to finish up all this sugary food and then I'll be able to start. No, do it right away. You'll have a completely different approach to the whole holiday season if you already start reducing sugar. And if you have a different approach to the holiday season right now, then when the holiday season ends, you won't feel pre-defeated by this, oh my God, I ate so much at Thanksgiving, I ate so much at Christmas, I need to do a New Year's resolution because we all know how those end. You won't feel like that. You'll already feel like you have regained control of your health, like you are stronger and you are better than that. Okay? So stop right here. I can tell you for a fact, there'll always be another excuse. You just have to do it. You got to do it now. Just go into your pantry or go wherever you are. Take out that beloved box of whatever your favorite um, craving sugary food might be and just throw it out. You know, it might be frosted cereal, cakes, donuts, cookies, whatever it is. It's time to ditch it. It is killing you. Okay. And it's killing your family. It's killing all of those around you. So you want to live healthy. So just get rid of the sugar that's around you. Number two, read the labels on everything. Now, this is crazy. You've got to always, 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 no matter how safe you think the food is that you're buying, you've got to read the label. Because why? Because so many foods that pretend to be healthy have hidden sugar inside. I bought a soup once from the from Whole Foods a few months ago. It was in fact it was last winter. And I thought this vegetable soup is gonna be really healthy for me. And this is one I got I'm gonna have. And I grabbed the food the soup off the shelf of the supermarket and I thought I'm just gonna check for some ingredients. I have a few allergies so I have to be careful. So I flip on over, I look at the nutritional facts And I was absolutely shocked to discover there was 25 grams of sugar per serving. That's five teaspoons. Five teaspoons of sugar in just one serving of soup. Knowing that the serving of soup is just one cup. Does one cup of soup feed you at lunchtime? Not so much. So imagine if you were to have two cups of soup. That would be 50 grams of sugar. That would be 10 teaspoons in just one sitting absolutely insane so read the labels if you're thinking about trying out a new source that your friend told you about read the labels you whatever you're buying off the shelf in the supermarket in the grocery store read the label recipes that call for an ingredient that you've never heard of read the label brands you don't usually eat but they suddenly appear on a coupon or a special offer or in a store you're not used to going to, read the label, okay? And you're going to learn so much. You know, I, I was just explaining this to my parents not so long ago, and they said, oh, you know, we have, we started looking at the labels. In fact, they've now downloaded an app which um, enables them to scan the, the, the barcode and tells them exactly what the contents are going to be and if it's a good or a bad food for their health, um, which I think is amazing. So I also know I'm being a little bit redundant and I'm repeating myself a lot here, but, you know, playing the label detective is a repetitive business. <laughs> you're going you're gonna to end up, I now do it automatically. And sometimes my husband laughs when he goes to the supermarket with me because he's like, well, going to the store takes forever because you read a thing. But then you, you start getting used to it and you learn and you know exactly what to look for, where to look at it, you know, it's it's with practice, you'll get used to it, it will become easier and faster, uh, and and it'll become something that's just intuitive, and that you'll do naturally. You will become an expert and keep on doing it until you become an expert and teach, you know, teach your partners, teach your kids, teach your parents, teach your friends, teach those around you to read those labels. Um, And before you know it, you'll be reading them upside down and backwards with your eyes shut. Um, But keep reading on, okay? Absolutely everything. 
Take time to find replacements and avoid the inner aisles completely. Have you ever noticed when you go to the grocery store that um, some of the aisles in the middle will have all the foods that you should not be eating? You go straight to the center of the supermarket and they don't, which is really funny because in France, a lot of the supermarket that I used to go to when I was growing up in the middle of the supermarket had the fresh fruit and vegetable section. So it just goes to show how sort of different countries organize their supermarkets differently. But um, so let's have a look at this third, third tip. So take the time to find replacements. Write out your usual shopping list. Keep it double spaced so you can take notes between the lines. And on a day that you've got plenty of time, go to the grocery store and as you shop, employ trick number two, play the label detective. And write down, notice on your grocery list, are there items that you have been used to buying all your life that contain more sugar than you should be consuming? If you find something that does hide lots of sugar, cross it off and make sure you don't buy it anymore. And go and explore the surrounding shelves to see if you can find a replacement for that item. If you're in doubt, more than welcome to email me. I'll be happy to help. Just take a picture of the product and send me an email and we'll figure it out together. Once you're finished, keep that list for a reference for future, future shopping trips. Number four, avoid the inner aisles completely. So this is what I was telling you earlier. Just avoid all those aisles that keep all the hidden and not so hidden sugar. Don't even let yourself be tempted. Shop the perimeter and ignore the, the rest as much as possible. It only takes two weeks. You, this is, this is, I mean, in fact, there are people for whom it takes long, it takes um, shorter. I've worked with some of my clients, some of my ladies, within three days, they said, you know what, that's it, my, I don't have any craving for sugar anymore. No sugar and you'll find that you no longer crave for it. Now, you need to keep this in mind because during that period, whether it's three days, two weeks, 10 days, you're going to go through all sorts of symptoms of withdrawal. You might be, feel you're irritable. You might find yourself snapping. You might feel yourself not quite um, asleep or not quite awake. It might make you feel a little bit sort of moody. Don't worry. It's fine. It's, it's, everything's fine. It's just your body and it's those, that, those naughty bad gut bacteria, the bad guys who are just becoming a little bit angry as they're dying off. Just stick to the plan. Stay away from the sugar. And if you do, you'll be fine. But if you cheat, your addiction is just going to reset and you'll have to start all over again from day one. It's not worth it. Keep a journal. You know, when I'm doing something that requires a lot of willpower, I'll take some notes. So if, if it requires a lot of willpower for you to quit sugar, make sure you journal it. Make sure you record your thoughts with a pen, pen and paper. Give yourself a give up sugar journal and just, you know, write down a few thoughts. Or if you feel that you're going to be, you're going to, you're about to cheat, you're about to reach out for that cookie or that chocolate bar or that sweet can of soda, then just take a moment, have a sip of water and write down why you feel you need this right now. Just write it down. What was the situation that you were in? How are you feeling emotionally in that moment? Why you think this sweet sugary food is a solution to this problem? And once you've done that exercise two, three, four, maybe five times, you won't feel the need to do it anymore. And also, you won't be reaching for the sugar anymore. Trust me, this is going to work for you. So try to write it down at least once a day or when you have a rough one, you know, and then you'll find ways, coping mechanisms to fight against those cravings. My best advice really is actually to have a plan and to work with a team. Now, the team could be your co-workers in the office, it could be your family at home, it could be your friends, 
um, but just do it together. So have a plan. So for example, say, okay, I'm going to give myself two weeks um, for this maddening addiction to go away. So I'm going to inform the people around me that, you know, I'm quitting sugar and please don't tempt me. And please, I apologize if I come across as a little bit moody because this is a challenge for me. Be open. You know, people can only understand you if you communicate. But if you don't communicate, people can't, you know, are not mind readers and they can't guess what's going on for you. Write down every meal you're going to eat to have a meal plan. I think a meal plan is great when you're quitting sugar, when you're trying to change some nutrition habits because you can prepare the food up front so you can do some batch cooking over the weekend or one, one day in the week. And you know exactly what you're going to eat. And you're never in a situation of, hmm, I feel like a donut or maybe pizza. Or wait a minute, let me scroll through my phone and see which restaurants I can order from. No, you won't need to do that because you'll know exactly. You'll have already prepared it. You have the portion sorted and everything is there for you. And team up. It's always so much easier to break an addiction if you have a quit buddy or an accountability buddy. So of course, this is, as your coach, this is also what I'm here for. But I also encourage you to share and, and go through those experiences with those you love, those you care for, and see if someone can share that journey with you. At that stage, you're not only getting yourself healthier, but you're also getting someone else healthier, you know? And then the more we spread the word for a healthy lifestyle the more healthy the world will become and it'll be easier to fight off diseases we i mean this is obviously full utopia but one body at a time we can change so whether it's a friend a co-worker or a relative a total stranger try and see if you can do that together as a team i mentioned this earlier but know the hidden sugar signals processed foods are notorious for hiding sugar in odd places. In fact, there's um, an interesting story. A few years ago, there was a surplus of um, sugar and there was this huge trend for low fat. So what the manufacturers did is, well, I've got all this excess sugar and, and it was particularly in the dairy industry. And they were saying, I've got all this excess sugar I don't know what to do with it. and I need to sell it. Right. And I see people, are, there's a big trend. It was in the 80s, big trend about wanting, you know, lose weight. And so they said, well, let's do this. Let's take the fat out, replace it with sugar, sell it at a premium because it's low fat. It's going to get you skinny, you know, so we should charge you more for that. Use that excess fat and put it into another produce that we're also going to sell at a premium. And so you had two options. You could buy a product that was loaded with fat or a product that was loaded with sugar. But either way, you were going to have something that was unhealthy. So always beware of the low fat, reduced fat, fat-free options. Anything that should have fat in it but that says it's fat-free is definitely, most likely, going to have sugar added to it, okay? Um, also, beware of ingredients that are ending in O's, O-S-E. That usually means sugar. There are a lot of them, and they all have different chemical structures, but all have one thing in common. They are all sugar, Anything that has zero gram per serving is probably a lie. So watch out for that. Be careful. Every single, almost all ingredients contain a little bit of natural sugar somewhere, somehow. So just, you know, be aware, educate yourself, read labels. And, you know, if you're unsure of something, Google it or just reach out to me. Reach out to your coaches. If something that says zero grams of sugar per serving and has a funny little asterisk, you know, a little star symbol next to it, beware. Check the serving size. Because if the serving size is a teaspoon, but the reality is you're going to eat a cup, then there's a likelihood there is going to be a fair bit of sugar in that cup. So 
it's always the case. They've always got manufacturers always have very, very smart and sneaky ways to lead you to think that you're eating something healthy, but you're not. My grandma used to say, if you want to eat healthy, don't eat anything that's out of a packet. And only eat something that you've made yourself from fresh produce. Indulge in your safe foods. So go ahead, treat yourself to any sugar-free food that are comfort food to you. It should take some of the edge off the craving, but beware of foods containing artificial sweeteners. And these usually come with their own list of health damaging effects. Sugar alcohols tend to make you very gassy and can make you very bloaty. I think I would prefer us to look at some safe snack foods and safe options and alternatives. I think also a good thing of trying to do and I have loads of recipes for that, is creating your own snacks. That way you know exactly what you're eating. Raw veggies and a dairy-free dip, for example. You know, you can have like a tofu vegetable spread with some raw vegetables. You could have a hummus with some veggies. That's a great snack. Turkey slices with mustard and avocado. Beware of the pre-packaged turkey slices. They can sometimes be loaded with sugar or sodium. So watch out for those. Some are good. Some are not so good. Again, read the packet. Apple almond butter, always a great combination. Fantastic. Gluten free toast with avocado or hummus. How good is that? But I can hear you saying, but what if I feel like something sweet? Again, the apple and the almond butter is great. Have a small piece of a banana. Have some dark chocolates. Have some nuts and seeds and raw cacao nibs. Raw cacao nibs are absolutely amazing. They're loaded with magnesium. They're really good for you. They have a little bit of a crunch. They taste like chocolate. And they don't have that, I need to eat nonstop, like your M&Ms might. You know, you can just have a little teaspoon with some raw cacao nibs, maybe a couple of goji berries, two pecans, and a nice cup of warm ginger tea, and you're great. Cinnamon is also a great spice to have. It will help you manage that craving for sugar. One of the teas that I drink daily, I'll put um, a tea bag of ginger tea in a cup of water with a cinnamon stick. And I'll just keep topping it up with the water. And I make that every morning and then I drink it throughout the day, but I just keep topping it up. That way I'm not, because otherwise I think I'd be using a box of ginger tea a day maybe. But if but it's if we just, you know, we just have little tricks like this. And for me, that just really does the trick. It doesn't make me want to crave sugar and I, I don't consume anything that contains sugar anymore. Of course, every now and again, I'll have a piece of cake. You know me, I'm a firm believer of buying the shoes, drinking the wine, eating the cake, taking the trip. But all in moderation, all part of a very well-balanced and healthy lifestyle, nutrition habits, mindset, and movement, okay? So this is the end of our session. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. I'm Coach Steph B. Uh, my website is befitbefab.com. Go have a look, check it out. There are some pages that I've been revamping and they're still a little bit under construction. So if you find anything odd or unusual, just drop me an email, steph at befitbefab.com. And like I said, befitbefab is all about movement, nutrition, and mindset. Um, I focus on enabling you to connect or reconnect with your fit and fab self to achieve your healthy weight and say no to the yo-yo. Um, if we work together, there'll be no diets, no pills, and no deprivation. I want you to feel healthy, and I will help you get fit, fabulous, and happy like you've never been before. You will have more energy, glowing skin, better sleep, clear mind, stronger body, as some of the benefits from working with me. The knowledge we learned just now in this session is only a small part of achieving success. You need to get the support and take action to create healthy habits that stick. And that's why we should work together. 
I like to work as a team. It's not a one-way street. It's a two-way street. I'm like your co-pilot. I will give you some direction, but then you will do the work. But I will be there to support you and make sure you don't fall off tracks. So please email me, steph at bfitbfab.com. You'll receive a free copy of the Quit Sugar handouts. There's five handouts in total, including um, examples uh, uh, on um, cravings, managing your craving strategies, um, snacks, healthy snacks to have instead of when you feel like you want to have some something sweet, something that contains sugar. It's got a couple of recipes. Um, it's also got um, a handout on some of the hazards of sugar that you can share with your family and friends. Um, so a lot, a lot of information still. They're all about one, one and a half pages long. So it's not going to be some extreme long literature. Don't worry. Um, and you'll also get a 20% discount coupon on a program of your choice. So some of the key programs I have, some of my flagship programs are the Little Black Dress is a 28-day nutrition plan uh, that comes with meal plans, uh, daily support emails, recipes, grocery list, and a four-day workout plan to do at home. Um, I have another one which is a ketogenic this I try to work really mainly with type 2 diabetes um, are those who are going to um, really benefit the most from this plan. Um, and then I have an eating for energy program, which is really geared a lot towards uh, women who have lost weight and who are trying to stabilize and maintain, as well as um, active um, female athletes who need to be able to manage their weight while still performing in their sports. Um, this this is also, also works very well. And then I have a couple of other shorter programs that uh, we can work on. Obviously, there's some turnkey solutions that you can get and then just run and do it yourself. But there's also uh, uh, personalized and custom coaching solutions that we would discuss together. And guys, here is the great news. The first 10 emails will get the five free copies of the Quit Sugar handouts. We'll get a 20% discount coupon on the program of, the, of your choice. And we'll also get a free four-week meal plan. So you'll get a meal plan for four weeks with corresponding recipes and a weekly grocery list, which should help you to start quitting sugar right away. The first five emails to um, get in touch with me will not only get the five quit sugar handouts, the 20% coupon, the four week meal plan, but will also get a 20 minute fitness and wellness personal strategy call with me um, so we can discuss how I can help you, but also what are some key action points that you can take on right away. So with that said, a huge, huge thank you for tuning in, listening to this webinar. Please share all your learnings about the dangers, the hazards of sugar with your friends, your family, your coworkers, your surroundings. Please, please start taking action right now. If you have any questions, email me. I'm always here to help and always happy and eager to hear about what might be your daily struggles and how I can help you overcome them and how I can help you be healthy, be fitter and become happier overall. Okay. So thanks a lot. Again, my name is Coach Steph B from BeFitBeFab.com. My email is Steph at BeFitBeFab.com and I look forward to hearing from you very soon. Bye-bye.